All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kel. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 97, and today I will be examining some of the proposed components that could have been anchored into the tubular drill holes found in the black basalt stones in the Eastern Temple of the Pyramid of Sahure in Abu Sir, and also presenting a proprietary mechanism that could have been involved in the operation of the red granite dovetail valve mechanism located on the eastern side of the Pyramid of Winis in Saqqara. And for anyone that's interested, I just started a members-only channel here at the Land of Chem that will feature all the newest research discoveries, including an entire series of chemical analysis and exclusive footage that will not be shown here on the public YouTube channel. And to give you a preview of what you can expect, here are some scanning electron microscope images from the recent chemical analysis that show these microspherules, metal fragments, more microspherules, and exotic particles with extremely complex chemical compositions. So if you want access to this material, just join the Land of Chem members only channel, link in the video description below. So if this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. And don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. If you want to help support the channel, like, comment, and check out thelandofchem.com. I just got my hands on my first few prints of the new six degree Green Lion logo, and they are absolutely spectacular, all available at thelandofchem.com. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. So to begin, in this image, you can see the scattered remaining stone fragments that were once part of the Eastern Temple at the Pyramid of Sahore in Abu Sir, as shown in my special permission access Sunday site visit 10. And if you haven't seen that, it is a must watch episode, link in the video description below. And within some of these black basalt blocks, you will find tubular drill holes that were housings for various components. And here is one in the corner and another one up front with the remains of green copper oxide from the metal inlay that was once adorning this piece of stone. Here is another image of the same stone block with the tubular drill holes, one here and one here, and then a long rectangular outline of a component housing here. And I will put in some on-site footage now so you can see this piece up close in person. All right. So now we are going to cross over. And here are some hinges that you can see. There's a hinge there and a hinge there that would have been for a door mechanism. And as we proceed into this adjacent temple, you will see more of the conduit system. So here is a conduit here. Channel heading out in this direction. So the conventional explanation would be that these are for drainage. Okay, so if this is for drainage, why is it running in this direction and then over here? Follow this, it's going to lead over here to a housing area. You see some black basalt, some red granite, and of course, the question remains what was originally housed in this area that was connected into these conduits? And I've proposed on numerous occasions that these temples were for processing of the product or for processing of the raw materials. So in the Northern Temple at the Steppe Pyramid, for example, there was a processing complex on the northern side of the structure that introduced the raw materials into the primary reaction chamber. So 
So I would imagine there's most likely one on the northern side of this structure as well. We are now on the eastern side, and it appears that these eastern temples are for extraction of the product, processing, refining, etc., etc., and then inevitably the collection thereof. And I could literally spend all day walking around this area just investigating all of the, see the drill hole? And there would have been a component or something of this nature here. And there's absolutely no way to tell. So, tube drill. And one here. And it's complete speculation what was originally lodged into these housings. All right, everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to help support the channel, just check out thelandofchem.com. I have the new six degree Green Lion logo, the fifth degree Central Pyramid Hydrochloric Acid logo, the new second edition print copy of the Land of Chem book, this beautiful new Egyptian blue edition, signed copies, extremely rare, only 89 copies in existence of the original first edition purple orchid paper print of the Land of Chem book are also available all at thelandofchem.com. So if you want to show some love, just check out the website. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for the support. And here is that same block as discussed in Keith Hamilton's Layman's Guide to the Pyramid of Sahure, also linked in the video description below, where he presents some components that could have been housed in these stone tube drills and cutouts, specifically door frames, bolt holes, and metal cover plates that were proposed by Borchark, one of the first archaeologists to explore and excavate this site. And as you saw in the video, there is definitely evidence of these stone door hinge and frame systems throughout the site. And I agree with this interpretation for some of these missing components, as this absolutely would have been a secured area during its time of operation that was not accessible to just anyone that wanted to walk through the door. And here you can see a recreation of what one of these door frame and bolt systems may have looked like with the metal plate here secured between the adjacent stone blocks here and here and the metal bolts anchored down into the tubular drill holes. And this is a close up image of that same metal plate and bolt system. Here is another recreation of another component that may have involved metal chains in the locking mechanism of the door. And this is another concept for a more complex two bolt and metal plate door hinge system that was found in a block at the Valley Temple. And at the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, there are still artifacts in a very obscure display case in the corner of an often ignored area that show this type of metal and woodwork, and I'll be presenting that footage soon in an upcoming episode. And here you can see that same piece of stone with this more complex cross cut out door hinge mechanism, a perfect example of exceptional metallurgy and masonry in one artifact. However, given that none of these metal components still exist, these recreations are just hypothetical examples of what could have been housed in these stone block cutouts and tubular drill holes. But as you know here on the channel, I like to take the approach of a more functional interpretation of these components as related to the production of chemicals on an industrial scale. So yes, of course, they would have had doors, hinges, and locking mechanisms to secure this important and potentially dangerous area that may have involved hazardous chemical storage or processing. However, I think that some of these stone cutouts and tube drill holes may have been housings for more critical operational components. For example, the mechanism that may have been housed in the red granite dovetail housing found on the eastern side of the Pyramid of Winnie's in Saqqara. And I'll put in a clip now so you can see what this housing looks like before I show you what it could have been used for. The red granite valve here, let's go see this. And they call this area of the temple, the offering hall. And it is connected into this red granite. Here's the housings. 
and it's a dovetail that fits. I'll show you the top of it for those of you that haven't seen it yet. You can see the a sliding locking component that went in here and again the offering hall offering of what I would say offering of reactants into the pyramid you know imagine that this valve could open material could be introduced into the structure so it is technically speaking an offering hall but more like an inlet So I think generally speaking, there's just a misunderstanding of the original intentions of these structures being analyzed from the spiritual and religious aspect as opposed to the functional, which is the big misinterpretation of alchemy in general. Alchemy is not focused on spiritual transformation, but physical transformation of chemicals. And the spiritual layer was added to confuse and distract those who are not initiates into the sacred mysteries of practical physical chemistry. All right, now that you've seen the stone piece, here is a design that was sent to me by friend of the channel, Roger Irvin, of a sliding, locking valve closure that could have been incorporated into this red granite dovetail housing system. So just imagine this external component extending further below the mechanism, covering up the opening to a shaft that leads into the reaction chambers of the pyramid. This external locking mechanism could have been opened, slid up to open the valve, allowing an aqueous reactant solution or even just water to be introduced into the chambers. The sliding valve could have then been closed over the shaft and locked prior to commencing the reaction sequence, ensuring that the pressure within the system would be maintained and the valve opening would not be blown open. And here you can see a bird's eye view of how this mechanism may have fit precisely into those dovetailed stone grooves. And I think that this is a spectacular example of a functional component that could have been incorporated into these chemical reaction systems, as the mainstream pharaonic burial interpretation can provide no explanation whatsoever as to why there is a sliding dovetail valve system on this side of the Pyramid of Winis, which is not the primary open to the structure and is conventionally described as a quote-unquote offering temple area. And this is just the beginning of some designs of functional mechanisms that will be coming up here on the Land of Chem in the near future, so please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 97, Missing Components from the Pyramid of Sahore in Abu Sir. I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and in the next episode in the series, Sunday Site Visit 25, featuring an exploration of the Great Pyramid of Giza to investigate some before and after comparisons following the recent maintenance repairs. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the function of the Egyptian pyramids, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Don't forget to click that little notification bell, like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support the channel, thelandofchem.com, don't forget to join the Land of Chem members only channel for exclusive research releases that will not be presented anywhere else. Link in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's video. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>